there is something really interesting about the 3D Mario series, and that is that the different games don't have much in common with each other. If we ignore 3D World and Galaxy 2 for a second, then all those games are like completely different games. Sure, they all feature Toad, sometimes hiding in a corner, sometimes as a playable character. Most of them include Yoshi, sometimes as a secret extra, sometimes as a threat swallowing dinosaur tank, or PT Piranha appears in more than one of those games. But one time it's an almost shooter-like boss fight, while in the next game we run from her on a weird gravity planet thingy and try to spin her tail back onto herself. All the Mario games use the same enemies and obstacles and characters and whatnot. But the gameplay in the 3D Mario games dramatically changes from one to the next. Yet all of them are highly critically acclaimed games and all of them are among the best selling games on our console. This kind of leaves us with a question. What wizardry did Nintendo practice to make all those games so successful while making all of them so different? Well, in this video we are going to investigate this question. We are going to take a look at the very first world of all the 3D Mario games as a stand-in for the whole game. We will discuss how the series evolved, what new ideas Nintendo tried, what worked, where they failed and we will try to find out why all the 3D Mario games are so different. Oh, and we'll also quickly talk about where I've been over the last few months at the end of the video. But for now, let's take a look at the Mario games. So you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so it's 1996, the Spice Girls just landed their first number one single, Bill Clinton is running his re-election campaign and Nintendo just released the N64, the first Nintendo console that realistically was able to render 3D graphics. So this is one of the most important times in the very short history of gaming so far, it's a time where tons of new franchises appeared while practically all old franchises made the switch from 2D to 3D, some more gracefully than others. Mario famously nailed the additional dimension in Super Mario 64. But why was Mario so successful in 3D while so many franchises struggled? Well, they decided that 3D Mario is all about Mario's movement and that the stages are just playgrounds to toy around in. Mario's father, Shigeru Miyamoto, famously spent the first weeks of development in the basement catching a rabbit while trying to figure out what makes catching a rabbit in a basement in 3D fun. I hope I recalled that story correctly. Anyway, so Mario's movement is the star of the show and we can already see it in the iconic first stage, Bob on Battlefield. There is tons of open space with very few gameplay elements mixed in between. The stage is mainly built to give Mario space to jump throw and fling himself around in, with a couple of different star objectives scattered throughout. There is a total of 7 lonely stars waiting to get collected by Mario in this stage. Two are tied to exploration, named the red coin star and the 100 coin star. Two are tied to solving a mild puzzle, the one behind the chain jump and the one on the floating island and the other three are tied to completely different skill checks. One is a boss fight, one is a race to the top against Koopa the not so quick quick and the last one is shooting ourselves out of this cannon in a perfect angle while using the red cape. That's basically the blueprint with which most of the Mario 64 levels are built. Most of them are interesting places to explore, but Mario's movement has a lot of room and time to shine and then they test completely different skills. Sometimes platforming, sometimes exploration, sometimes observation and puzzle solving and sometimes weird skills like cannon shooting. That's basically Mario 64 in a nutshell. Needless to say, the game was a tremendous success. It can be argued that Mario 64 not only successfully brought Mario into the third dimension, but also shaped how 3D games work up until today, Mario 64 really set a high bar for 3D Mario gameplay, which brings us to Mario's next 3D adventure, Super Mario Sunshine. So Super Mario Sunshine is a game that always makes me angry when I play it. And the reason why playing Sunshine always makes me grumpy can easily be seen by taking a look at the very first stage, Bianco Hills. So at first glance everything looks like a straight improvement from Mario 64. I, I love how the stage starts with this cool slide section that leads us into the middle of the small village. Mario's moveset is vastly improved over Mario 64. Our favorite plumber now travels together with the talking graffiti cleaner Flood. Flood not only gives us the option to spray water, but it also adds the first of many, many different moves that Nintendo added over the years in order to give Mario's movement a mid-air correction. Galaxy got the mid-air twist, Odyssey got Cappy and Sunshine got the most aggressive mid-air direction changer in the form of a water jetpack. 
thingy. But the inclusion of Flood also comes with a downside. Mario suddenly forgot how to long jump between games, which in theory should make him a bit slower and clunkier to control. Luckily, this is not the case, thanks to the brilliant belly dive move added in Sunshine, one of my all-time favorite Mario moves and a move that sadly never made a return in any other Mario game. So back to the stage. The level is significantly bigger than Bob on Battlefield. There are now 11 shinies hidden in the stage and another 30 blue coins to search and find, which equals another 3 shinies. So at least on paper, the first Mario Sunshine stage offers double the amount of shinies in comparison to the 7 stars that Mario 64's first stage had to offer. Other than that, it's very similar to Mario 64's first level. It's an even wider playground from Mario to jump fling and apparently clean graffiti and everything is just a safe, cool first stage to familiarize ourselves with the controls and to start to get going. So why does playing this game make me angry again? Not because it's bad, but because Mario Sunshine sadly never reaches its full potential, because Mario Sunshine just got released before it was truly finished. The game simply got rushed out to the release date. There are tons of shortcuts the team took to artificially lengthen the game, and there is a lot of recycled content. We can easily see this in Bianco Hills, just by comparing what the different 10 shiny objectives are. The first objective is to defeat a boss we already defeated during the tutorial, the second objective is a new boss, then it is a red coin star, a secret cave, another red coin star, another secret cave, another recycled boss fight, and then Yep, then it's two more red coin stars. Out of the 10 shinies, two are recycled bosses and four are red coin challenges. So don't get me wrong, collecting all the shinies is still a ton of fun. The whole game is Mario Sunshine got one of the very best movement systems out of all Mario games. It is actually one of my favorite Mario games of all times if I were to have favorites, but we obviously do not have favorites around here. What always frustrates me when playing the game is how much missed potential there is. If the game would have gotten the time it needed and all the recycled objectives would be original new content and the game got one or two more worlds, then Mario Sunshine would be an even more amazing game than it currently is. It probably would be one of the best games ever made. But they rushed it out and it ended up being just amazing. <sighs> Anyway, the next 3D Mario game was Mario's first appearance on the Wii, Super Mario Galaxy. And Mario Galaxy is the first time Nintendo really changed the formula for a 3D Mario game, as we can immediately see in the first level. Gone are the days where athletic plumber jumps around in wide open areas while he explores them. Instead, the first level is now a series of small planets that are separated by fast travel stars, and the whole stage is strictly linear. Basically, Nintendo dropped everything that made 3D Mario, 3D Mario, and decided to start completely new. They clearly took inspiration from the secret courses in Mario Sunshine and to a lesser extent from the brilliant Bowser stages in Mario 64. Instead of offering open, explorable areas, the levels are now weird planets with twisted gravity. Instead of following a clear theme like an open bob on battlefield in 64 or a peaceful village in Sunshine, the stages are now all about variety. In the very first stage, we already collect star pieces, explore a crazy area, grow a plant, fight a plant, dodge dangerous rolling stones, platform atop a ruin and fight a boss. And that's just one star. Boss here is also a great example for another thing that makes Mario Galaxy such a joy to play. It's brilliant game design, in this case the use of priming. So what is priming? Well, the general idea is that we first get to work with something that works in a certain way which later is used in a different context but we are already familiar with it because we used it previously in a different context. Uh, that sounds super confusing. But it's actually surprisingly simple, here's what I mean. The boss gets defeated by spinning her tail so that it ouches back onto Petey's head. We got primed previously that the tail is going to bounce back by those... Um... By those... Those... Those plantapults. Those plantapults earlier act in a very similar way as the boss tail later on does. And the reason they appear in the stage before the boss is so that we get primed to this bounce back mechanic and a tutorial on how to damage the boss isn't required later on. To be super sure that every player understands how to attack the boss, we also start with the boss in an egg instead of being thrown into the fight directly. The first attack happens in a completely safe environment. There are dozens of such examples hidden within the first Mario Galaxy game. The much more linear approach allowed Nintendo to craft those games in a much tighter way and apparently Nintendo was very happy with how the game turned out because Mario Galaxy was the first 3D Mario game to get a direct sequel in the form of Mario Galaxy 2. The difference between the first and the second Galaxy game is also immediately obvious in the very first stage of Galaxy 2. The big difference here being that there basically is none. Galaxy 2 is just more of Galaxy 1 which, you know, 
is fine. The game is significantly harder, which the first level also reflects, and the weird and crazy planets only got weirder and crazier. But other than that, the game and the stages are very similar. We even end up fighting against PT again here, even though it isn't the same fight. Since there isn't that much to say about Galaxy 2, Let's instead quickly chatter about the reduction in Mario's movement options in between games. In the first two games, Mario was really the center of the action. Everything was about how our plumber moved around. But in the two Galaxy games, Mario's moveset is far more limited. Gone are insanely long long jumps, gone are belly dives and um, speaking water chatbacks. Instead we now get twisted gravity, note collection minigames, crazy platforming challenges over black holes and boss fights against piranha plant dinosaur ladies. And it's once again just the first stage. We'll talk more about why this is in a second, but for now, let's just note that Nintendo reduced the craziness of Mario's movement in the Galaxy games, but turned up the craziness of the stages up to 11. And Galaxy, just as the beginning of a trend here, the next Mario game, 3D Land, doubles down on this. 3D Land basically marks the point where Nintendo gave up on trying to give Mario complex moves and instead interpreted the 3D Mario games just to be like 2D Mario games? with an additional dimension. Mario's movement options got trimmed down to an absolute minimum. Our plumber lost his ability to triple jump. There is no in-air jump correction thingy present anymore. Mario's basic movement is minimal in this game. However, the game is the first 3D game to include the power-up progression system of the 2D games. The first stage is basically designed to be a tutorial for the Tanuki Leaf power-up. But the power-up system isn't the only thing where Nintendo took inspiration from the 2D games. All of 3D Land is basically Nintendo answering the question how a 2D Mario would play out in 3D. The 3D Land formula is actually so close to the 2D games that it can be debated if 3D Land and 3D World even are 3D Mario games or if they belong to the 2D Mario games. But that's a discussion best left to Mario's scholars and Mushroom Kingdom historians as there is no point to it. So the shift from Galaxy to 3D Land was probably not only because Nintendo was interested in finding out how a 2D game plays in 3D, it's probably mainly because of something that quite a lot of people aren't as far as I'm aware, aware of. 3D Mario games never sold as good as the 2D games did. In 2011, when 3D Land was released, the list of the best-selling Mario games looked like the following. The best-selling Mario game ever was the original Mario Bros, followed by Mario Kart Wii, followed by New Super Mario Bros, followed by New Super Mario Bros Wii, Mario Kart DS, Super Mario World, Mario Kart 7, Super Mario Land, Super Mario Bros 3, and only then the first 3D games appeared with Galaxy and Mario 64. So Mario 3D Land was very likely Nintendo trying to get the sale numbers of 3D Mario games closer to those of the 2D games by well, by making the games more alike. So the next time you wonder where Mario's triple jump went in 3D Land, it got sacrificed on the altar of Mario games' sales expectations. I wonder though why Nintendo never had the idea to put Mario in a car to boost the... Never mind. Anyway, there is actually something else going on in the first stage and in the game as a whole that is kind of interesting and that we haven't touched upon yet. There is a huge focus in 3D Land to show off the glorious 3D effect which you currently can't see. 3D Land was Nintendo's big title to sell the 3DS during its first holidays, so the game is designed to show off the 3D effect, which was the main selling point for the 3DS. So that's a guess on my end, but this small balance section thingy in the first stage was probably included just to show off how amazing and glorious the 3D effect is, which again you, you currently can't see. I, I promise it's cool though, 3D Mario games actually have a tradition of being used to showcase the main selling point of Nintendo consoles. Mario 64 was Mario but in 3D, 3D being the N64's selling point. Sunshine was Mario but on a much more powerful hardware, the Galaxy games are Mario but with tons of Wii mode shenanigans, Mario Land is Mario but in real 3D, Mario World features a lot of Wii U gamepad interactions and even Mario Odyssey included tons of motion control features to show off the nunchucks much to the game's detriment, but whatever. So let's move on to the first stage of Mario 3D World, the next mainline Mario game. So I remember when 3D World came out, I was seriously annoyed by the game. I was completely on board with a more 2D-like 3D Mario game like 3D Land on handhelds, but for the home consoles, at least my expectations were completely different. The thing is, the Galaxy games were a huge deviation from the gameplay established in Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine, and in 2013, when 3D World was released, it's been 11 long years without a sunshine-like 3D Mario. I was ready. My friends were ready. As far as I'm concerned, everyone was ready for a more 64-like Mario. Everyone but Nintendo. Because 3D World 
is basically 3D land, but in 1080p. We can see this clearly by comparing the first stages. There are similar trees, similar bushes, similar blocks, similar enemies, textures, similar design. <sighs> the games are just very, very similar. And at the time 3D World released, I was really, really disappointed by that. Actually, I put the game down after only a couple of worlds. 3D World was just too much linear, straight platforming Mario. Well, I was really craving for more exploration and movement focused gameplay. So it took me almost a year until I picked the game up again. And I'm happy to announce that I completely flipped my opinion on the game after 100%ing it for the first time. The game is probably my favorite straight platformer ever. The linearity, Mario's minimalistic movement design, the 2D power up system, the, the small playable areas, they all work together to create some of the most amazing stages in any game I've ever played. Period. The levels just explode with creative ideas. There are small amazing secrets and crazy ideas packed into every little corner. The levels are really the star of the show here. Mario is really just secondary. Which, which kind of brings us back to the problem we quickly chattered about previously. So the thing is the following. There is this really interesting design paradox with the Mario games that Nintendo wasn't able to solve entirely up until today. The more complex Mario's movement becomes, the less complex the levels can be, and the less complex Mario's movement, the tighter and more interesting the various obstacles can be. Think about the sizes of the stages for example. The higher Mario is able to jump, the higher all the ledges have to be built. The wider his long jump, the wider all the gaps become. The stages increase in size equal to the complexity of Mario's movement. But if everything gets bigger and bigger, then it gets more and more difficult to design small tight things like, like I don't know, like this 8-bit Mario minigame thingy in 3D World. Something like this would be a disaster with the movement of Mario Sunshine. The holy grail of 3D Mario games is a game with the stage complexity of Mario 3D World, but with movement like in Sunshine. But building a game like this is kind of paradox, since the one thing always stands in the way of the other. When we turn up the movement, we get wide open stages like Bob on Battlefield, we get insane speedruns and great exploration gameplay. If we tune down Mario's movement a bit, we get gimmicks like Galaxy's Gravity shenanigans, and if we turn down the movement to zero, we get 3D World, which explodes with gimmicks and crazy ideas, but we can't have both at the same time. Or at least it looks like we can't have both of them at the same time, because, at least as I see it, Nintendo really tried to bridge this gap, like really really tried. Which finally brings us to our final first level of a 3D Mario game, Mario Odyssey and the Cascade Kingdom. So we got a lot to discuss here. First things first, Mario's movement options are actually kind of tuned down in Odyssey. At at least at first glance. The long jump is nowhere near as wide as in Mario 64, the new belly dive doesn't cover a terribly wide distance either, nor is Odyssey's wall jump impressive compared to Mario 64's, or it doesn't even jump terribly high by default. But obviously, that's without Cappy. With Cappy, Mario has the most excessive movement in all of the 3D Mario games here. But the Cappy moves require some skill. They aren't terribly hard to learn by any means, but if you're playing through Odyssey for the first time, they don't come like second nature at first either. So in Odyssey, Mario basically has two different movesets. One a bit toned down, basic one, and another one for skilled players. So here's the catch. All challenges in the base game are designed around Mario's base movement options. It's perfectly possible to beat the game without ever jumping off of Cappy once. That's the first thing Nintendo tried in Odyssey in order to fix this stage movement paradox. They simply allow wide and crazy movement, but they lock it behind a skill wall and design as if the skilled movement doesn't exist. The second thing they tried is something that we can see in the stages themselves. The stages aren't really levels, they are more like hub worlds between different linear 3D world-like challenges. We can already see this in the Cascade Kingdom. All those doors and rockets and whatnot are basically entrances to the real linear platforming challenges of Odyssey. While the stage is kind of a hub world, like Peach's Castle in Mario 64, that wants to be explored and isn't terribly dangerous to traverse through, all the main stages in the game maybe with the exception of Bowser's Kingdom, are like this. That's basically how Nintendo tried to have amazing and crazy platforming gauntlets, while also allowing for open exploration gameplay, while also having insane movement options. And at least in my subjective opinion, they almost nailed it. Almost. The thing is, the movement in Odyssey is amazing. Exploring the stages works fantastic as well. The platforming gauntlets, however, I don't know, they... They just never reach the heights of 3D World or of Galaxy. A lot of them are a bit... like... boring? I honestly hope that Nintendo is currently working on Odyssey 2, because as far as I see it, 
The Odyssey concept is really brilliant. All they have to do is to nail the platforming gauntlets in a sequel. Okay, so to finally come back to the question from the start, why are all those games so different? Well, that may sound a bit crazy, since Nintendo has now been making 3D Mario games for almost a quarter of a century. But honestly, I believe they're still trying to figure out how Mario should play in 3D. They started with focusing on Mario and his movement in Mario 64 and doubled down on this approach with Sunshine. Sunshine though really derived far away from what Mario plays like in 2D, so they took a step back and tried to give Mario a bit more down-to-earth movement while shooting the complexities of the stages through the roof and into the space. They made the two Galaxy games. Those struck a way better balance between new 3D gameplay while staying faithful to what 2D Mario is. So they doubled down onto this and made 3D Land and World, games that probably were too close to the 2D games. So the logical next step was to try to have it all, which is what we see in Odyssey. And which honestly feels to me like the first game since Mario 64 that really defines what 3D Mario should play like. So basically, Nintendo spent the last 25 years trying to figure out where to take the 3D Mario franchise next after Mario 64. At least that's how I see it. The really interesting thing here is that while Nintendo tried tons of different things with Mario in 3D and while they never really settled onto something, each and every game they made, how different they might be, turned out to be a really really great game. Okay, so here we have it, a quick look at how the 3D Mario games evolved by taking a look at all the first levels. So before we end this little video, let's answer another eternal question. So where the fire flower have I been the last months? Um, basically life just happened. So there have been tons of things going on in my life over, I don't know, like, like the last year or so. And before someone asks if it was because of the girls, of course it was because of the girls. But there were also a couple of family things and then the whole corona thing happened, which which you know really sucks, but I don't have to tell you this because chances are you already noticed yourself. Anyway, so basically I was just making videos on the side to the best of my capabilities until one day stuff just got, I don't know, like, honestly, I, I, I just burned out a bit. So I decided to take a break for a couple of weeks, which turned into, well, a, a bit more. So um, here we are. Sorry that we went so long without any videos or updates. That honestly was not what I planned. So those were the bad news. The good news, we will have regular videos around here again. I'll be taking it a bit slower for now though. Hooray! So I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially like solving movement and stage paradoxes today and want to the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!